Good morning. We'll continue our discussion on the numerical problems from the first module. Question number 7. A compacted cylinder sample, 50 mm diameter and 100 mm length is to be prepared from an oven dried soil. If the specimen is required to have a water content of 15 percentage and percentage intervals of 20, you're asked to calculate the mass of water and the mass of soil required for preparation of the sample. You can take the specific gravity of solids as 2.69. Now I would suggest you to pause this video for a second and just read through the question carefully and understand the concept. You are asked to calculate the mass of water and the mass of soil to prepare a cylindrical sample whose dimension is already given at a particular condition and that, that condition is 15 percentage water content and 20 percentage air voids. G of soil is already given. Now since the units are given in millimeter, we can initially convert that to kilogram and meter cube as standard. Now, as you can intuitively understand, it starts from the three phase system diagram. You have a cylindrical sample to be prepared whose dimension is 0.05 meters and 0.1 meters which is 50 millimeter and 100 millimeter which is to be prepared using the solid soils and the water of course it starts from the three-phase system diagram and in the three-phase system diagram we know that the total volume which as a volume of the cylinder in this particular case is equal to the volume of air plus a volume of water plus a volume of solids or VA plus VW plus VS is equal to the total volume V is equal to pi by 4 into 0 0.05 square into 0 0.1 in this case because that is a volume of the cylinder that we need to prepare so its value turns out to be 1. Point I'm sorry, 196.35 into 10 to the power of minus 6 meter cube. So let's mark that as equation number A. So our question is to find the mass of solid soil and mass of water, which when compacted at a particular water content of 15 percentage and percentage error is 20 percent, will give you a total volume of 196.35 10 to the power of minus 6 meter cube and you are given with Na or percentage air voids as 0 0.2 or Va by V is given as 0 0.2 from which on cross multiplication you will get Va is equal to 0 0.2 times the total volume or 0 0.2 times the volume that we have calculated here. So VA, which is a volume of air, turns out to be 39.27 into 10 to the power of minus 6 meter cube. Let us mark that as equation number 1. Now, in order to get the second term VW, which is equal to mass of water by density of water, we are given with the water content. Water content, which is MW by MS, is given as 15 percentage or 0 0.15 so on cross multiplication you'll get mass of water as water content multiplied by mass of solids equal to 0.15 into ms so from these two equations you can know that volume of water is equal to 0 0.15 ms by rho w Raw W is nothing but the density of water and since we have taken kilograms and meter cube as a standard unit here I have taken Raw W as 1000 kilogram per meter cube so in short from these two basic equations I can write VW which is a volume of water in terms of MS mass of solids which is unknown at this particular time so I have an equation VA and I have another equation for VW. Let's mark that as equation number 2. Now 
to get V as the volume of solids, you can write V as is equal to ms by rho s. But rho s is equal to g rho w. So I can write V s is equal to ms by g rho w where g is the specific gravity which is already given in the question and rho w is a known density of water. So I can write V s is equal to ms by 2.67 into rho w and I can mark that equation number 3. So now I have an equation, equation number 1 where V a plus V w plus V s is equal to a known value and I have three sets of equation 1, 2, 3 where V s, V w and V a are available. So I can substitute 1, 2, 3 equations in equation number a and I can get the unknown which is m s and from which I can get the water mass based on the water content. So solving 1, 2, 3 and substituting in A will give you mass of solids, the unknown, and from water content, I'll get the mass of water. Next question, question number 8. A clay specimen has used CS of 240 kilopascal in undisturbed state, and on remolding, its strength was found to be 54 kilopascal. You're asked to find the sensitivity. Now we had defined sensitivity as the ratio of undisturbed strength to the remolded strength. So the undisturbed strength or the UCS is already given as 240 and on remolding it got reduced to 54. So it's a direct application of sensitivity 240 by 54 is equal to 4.44. A very direct application of sensitivity. Question number 9. A dry sample has equal volume of solids and voids. You are asked to find the voids ratio and the porosity. No numerical value is given. All that is given is that you have equal volume of solids and voids and the sample is dry. Which means in this case the sample is dry, you don't have, you don't have water and you are given that the solids as an equal volume to the voids. So in short, E is equal to VV by VS and N equal to VV by V, which is known to us, but we are given with the fact that volume of voids is equal to the volume of solids. So what VV is equal to VS and obviously value of E will be equal to 1 and from which you will get the porosity N is equal to 0 0.5. Next question, question number 10. A clay soil has a moisture content of 15.8% at 70.8% degree of saturation. The specific gravity is 2.72. The soil is then allowed to absorb water to reach degree of saturation 90.8%. What will be the new water content? So again, you have a soil sample whose water content, let's assume that it is blue in color, is 15.8% and the degree of saturation in that case is 70.8. Now, if the, if the soil sample is then allowed to absorb water like a sponge to reach a degree of saturation 90.8%, Let's assume that in, in, in the new case you have a few more void spaces filled with water or a few more white color has got turned into blue color. Now in that case, you're asked to find the new water content. So in short, degree of saturation increases from 70.8 to 90.8 and what will be the new water content in that case where you have specific gravity already given as 2.72. Now the idea remains in this picture, the void ratio remains the same. When the degree of saturation increases, water content increases without changing the voids ratio. In short, the, the, the voids were 
air was filled earlier is now filled with water to a certain extent but void ratio will remain the same so that is the idea we will depend on the equation s e equal to w g or e is equal to w g by s so in case number one you have w the water content as 0 0.158 or 15.8 percentage and s degree of saturation is 0 0.708 or 70.8 percentage and specific gravity is 2.72 so substituting that you will get the void ratio 0 0.607 again in case number two where the degree of saturation is increased to 90.8 percentage you can make use of the voids ratio because it remains the same so water content is equal to se by g where s is a new degree of saturation 90.8 e is the same voids ratio 0 0.607 and g specific gravity is also the same value 2.72 so substituting that you will get the new water content which is 20.3 percentage or 0 0.203 so in short when the water content or the moisture content got increased from 15.8 percentage to 20.3 percentage the degree of saturation increased from 70.8 to 90.8 because the void ratio remains constant question number 11 an embankment having a total volume has a water content of 16 percentage and dry density given as 1.75 gram per cc it was constructed from a borrow pit where the undisturbed soil has a water content of 13 percentage and void ratio 0 0.6 you're asked to calculate the quantity of soil which was excavated from the construction for the construction of the embankment g can be taken as 2.68 now embankments are nothing but the ones that you construct to lay usually a road pavement so beneath the road pavement you will have an embankment now while constructing an embankment what you what you usually do is you get soil from any other site where you can have access to uh, soil which you prefer for example you don't have to have clay soil you would prefer a soil which can be easily compacted so these soils would be usually taken from what we call as a borrow pit because that is where you borrow the soil from so in this particular question you have a borrow pit let's assume that the pit looks like this for the sake of analysis and in that borrow pit the water content is given as 13 percentage and the void ratio is given as 0 0.6 what you do is you take the soil from the borrow pit and construct an embankment like this and the properties of the embankment are water content 16 percentage dry density 1.75 gram per cc and total volume of the embankment 50,000 meter cube now you are asked to calculate the quantity of soil which has to be excavated from the borrow pit for the construction of the embankment now one thing that you need to understand is that the density of soil in the borrow pit need not be the density of the soil in the embankment so that is the key point in this question the dry density of soil in the embankment is given as 1.75 gram per cc and the volume of the embankment is given as 50,000 meter cube and I can convert that to cc by multiplying by 10 to the power of 6 so once you know the dry density and the total volume of the embankment you can find the mass of the solid soil in the embankment so mass of solid soil is nothing but 1.75 gram per cc multiplied by the volume of the embankment so we'll get 8.75 into 10 to the power of 10 grams so that is the mass of the soil the dry soil that is required to construct the embankment 
Now, where do you get that mass from? You get that mass from the pit. Now, the pit will have a different dry density, which you can find using this equation. Rho D equal to G by 1 plus E into Rho W, where G is already given in the question 2.68. E void ratio is already given as 0 0.6 and rho w is the density of water which is 1 gram per cc. So I can substitute that and I can get the dry density of a soil in the bore of it 1.675 gram per cc. So fundamentally I am taking the soil whose dry density is 1.65 gram per cc from the bore of it transporting it by trucks and laying it to construct the embankment whose dry density is 1.75 gram per cc. So the mass of the soil that has to be taken from the pit will be from the volume of the soil, from the bore of it, right? So you're asked to calculate the quantity of soil, which means you're asked to calculate the volume of the soil from the bore of it. So volume of the soil from the bore of bore of it, Vb would be equal to mass by the dry density. I have the mass here and I have the dry density here. So just divide the mass by the dry density or divide the mass of the embankment in its dry case divided by the density of the soil in the bore of it. So 8.75 into 10 to the power of 10 divided by 1.65 gram per cc. This is equal to 52239 into 10 to the power of 6 centimeter cube. So the key idea in this particular question is to understand that to calculate the quantity of soil that is to be excavated from the pit, you use the dry density of the soil in the pit and the mass of the soil in the embankment. You can't use the density of soil in the embankment but you have to use the density of soil in the dry pit. Once you understand that concept, this problem would be easy.